Today I'm going to look at V-horn saxophones from Acoustic Samples V-series. If you're just here to see if they're worth buying, the answer is 100% yes. In my opinion, they're not only the best saxophones available today, but probably up there with the best virtual instruments ever made. This is quite a long video, which includes a quick overview and review, some short demos in different contexts, and some tips just from my own experience using them. I've put chapters in the video, so if there's a section that's more relevant for you, feel free to skip ahead. The horn saxophones contains eight instruments, two sopranos, two altos, two tenors, and two baritones. The first of each option gives a sound slightly more suited to jazz, and the second is more geared towards classical. Here's a quick blast of each instrument straight out the box in reverse order. <laughs> They can do pretty much everything real saxophones can do. It would be fun to have a few extended techniques in a future update, like multiphonics or something, but they're already fantastic as they are. Thanks to the two options for each instrument, they can adapt to fit numerous styles. They sound real to my ears, and they respond pretty much instantly, to the point where you can't really play any faster than the instrument can handle, and even at crazy speeds it still sounds realistic. On the main interface, you have three dials. The first controls vibrato, and there are three options for this. Automatic, auto time, which is controlled by this little grid in the top right corner on preferences here, and manual, where you can just assign a CC or even pitch bend. The middle dial is the airflow. This controls the amount of air blown into the instrument, which generally controls dynamics and the third dial controls the amount of reverb. At the top, you have a few different presets to choose from. And you can always just click default to go back to what it was originally. At the bottom there are three tabs. Mix, where you can edit things like microphones, EQ and reverb. Virtual space, where you can place the instruments anywhere in a band setup. Adjust the stereo width. And choose from five different microphones. And finally there's the preferences, where you can adjust the pitch, including the tuning of each note, as well as controlling things like pitch accuracy and the settings for pitch bend. In the legato transition section, you can control the sound of the transitions in relation to the velocity of the new notes. You can control the transitions themselves and when they trigger, and even add flutter to them. Mm -hmm. 
You can adjust the auto time vibrato by clicking Edit Auto Vib and drawing how you want it to sound. And you control the amount of vibrato on the main dial at the top. You can adjust individual aspects of the vibrato itself, volume, pitch and speed. To reset any of these sliders, just hold Option and click on them and they'll revert back to their default setting. In the general section, you can add a mixture of growl and flutter to the sound and control how much natural variation there is, such as air or tuning as well as deciding how much noise you want to hear from the keys or tongued notes. And there are two different options for round robins, but I tend to leave these turned off. And that's it really. There's a box here to do with MIDI stuff like transposing and using scales, uh, and you can also adjust the range of the modulation to suit your playing style. There are a couple of extra tabs at the top where you can add effects, and I think ARP is an arpeggiator, but that's everything. Um, so I've done 10 short demos in different contexts. These are more or less completely out the box. I've added reverb to a few of them, but some are completely dry, and some don't have even any panning or anything. But I thought it would be good to show how they sound without lots of work. If you want to hear how they can sound with lots of work, I've also written 10 tips at the end of this video. Um, where I use some of the mock-ups I've made using these instruments. I also just wanted to include a clip of all eight saxophones playing together. So here's all of them playing a chromatic scale, along with a muted trumpet borrowed from the brass section of V-horns. This is just out the box, but I've spread the instruments out across the front row of the virtual space. So, very quick disclaimer before I play these 10 contextual demos. I'm not a jazzer, and uh, I'm not 100% sure what these styles are called, and I don't want to guess and get it wrong, so I've just put kind of descriptions for what I think they sound like, along with each, each clip. Some of them I wrote for this, and some of them are just drawn from previous projects that I've worked on, uh, and hope you enjoy listening to them. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm going to use three projects to show my top 10 tips for using these instruments. The first project here is a short improvisation I did the other day, uh, which was just to demonstrate the trills on these instruments for someone. In case you're not sure what trills are, they're just sort of fast alternating notes, and not all virtual instruments can do them very well. So here's the piece. I played it in at half speed and then just put the tempo up to 120. <laughs> So my first tip is, make sure that the style of the vibrato matches the style of the music. If you're like me and you don't have something that can easily control the vibrato, you're going to need to use the settings here. It's this bit here in the corner where the magic happens. First you have to make sure that this dial is set to auto time, and then it's just in this corner. Click on edit auto vib and you can just draw how you want the vibrato to sound on this map here. If in doubt, as a general rule, if the music is fast, the vibrato is likely to be fast, and if it's slower, the vibrato will be slower. This isn't just the speed of the vibrato itself, but how soon the sound starts to vibrate. In very fast music, it needs to start much sooner, otherwise you don't hear any. Here's the same piece with no vibrato. And here's the same thing with a slow and wide vibrato. And here is the original again. If I'd spent any time on it, I probably would have gone back again and added a bit more but it was just really to show the trills. My next tip is keep the articulations varied. By that I mean make sure that not all notes overlap each other and also not all notes are detached. Even if this is chosen at random it's better than having them all the same. Here's the clip with just legatos. <laughs> Here's the clip with just short notes. And here's the original again. On similar lines, tip number three. Make sure that the modulation isn't static. Here's the clip with no change to the modulation. Just like with the articulation, random is better than nothing at all. Here's some random lines. And just to prove it's completely random, I'll draw some dots in. So for me, that's way better than nothing at all. This is a pretty good rule for any virtual instruments. Make sure that the dynamics are always moving and rarely ever static. Okay, for the next tips, I'm gonna use the solo from a short mock-up of the Monsters Inc. theme tune. This is for soprano sax, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tip number four is use multiple tracks for the same line. Although V-horn saxes play like a dream and they sound amazing with just a keyboard, if you want to really get into detail, you need things like growls and different styles of vibratos and maybe even different EQ on some notes. So I find it easier to just have specific tracks with specific sounds, like this track which I've labelled Delayed Vib and it sounds like this. Or this one I've labelled Insta Vib. Super Wide Vib and barely any vib. So this whole solo is just one instrument spread across different tracks that do different things. And for some bits, I only end up using one note per track. My next tip is, from time to time, try dropping the volume on ornaments. If you're not sure, ornaments in music are the little extra notes added to make something sound more interesting. Um, they're also called decoration. So if you decorate a line, it just means you add little notes to it. So if you dramatically reduce the volume on these little notes, they end up becoming more felt than heard. It makes it a nightmare for people like me to try and transcribe this stuff, but it's a really cool effect to have. You can see I've drawn a drop in the modulation here for these little notes, and here's how that sounds. And again. And without. You don't have to do this for all decoration, but I think it's a good thing to include occasionally. My next tip is play out of tune most of the time. So this one sounds a bit bonkers, but you definitely don't want a saxophone to hit every note perfectly in tune if you want it to sound realistic. As a default, it sounds best to my ears for everything to be slightly sharper than the rest of the ensemble. This adds a bit of realism, but also helps the instrument sing out a bit in a way that doesn't require snazzy plugins or an expert knowledge in mixing and balancing. I made this mock-up before I really learned all the features that V-Horns has to offer, so I've just altered the tuning manually using pitch bend. This wasn't just to increase the overall pitch, uh, but also there are a few tricks you can use pitch bend for, for example, there are a couple of high notes in this clip, and any pro saxophone player could play these in their sleep. But if you alter the pitch of these notes a bit, and maybe even don't quite reach the note itself, it gives the impression to the listener that the note is difficult to play, and therefore it makes it a more exciting performance. This is a trick used on pretty much every instrument. For example, on piano, scales and arpeggios are easy peasy, but performers will try to make them look difficult so that the audience is more engaged. Here's how that sounds. So that's pitch bend. Use it everywhere in saxophone solos to make them sound more realistic. If you'd like to hear the whole mock-up, it's on my YouTube channel, and I'll try and work out how to add it as a link at this point in the video. If it doesn't appear, I didn't work out how to do it, or I forgot about it when I uploaded it to YouTube. For the last few tips, I'm going to use a short clip from another Pixar film. This one is the amazing saxophone solo from The Incredibles. Original music by Michael Giacchino and arranged by Gordon Goodwin. Here's how the solo sounds. <laughs> As you can see, I've done lots of the same things I did in Monsters Inc. There are about six tracks to cover this one short solo, including one track for this one note. I've also used pitch bend everywhere, and the general pitch of the whole thing is very slightly higher than the rest of the ensemble. Okay, tip number seven is play behind the beat. Especially when there are notes in a row that have the same value, these notes ideally shouldn't be in time. Here's how that sounds in context.
So here are a few notes together with the same value. You can see they're mostly very slightly behind the beat, even on the first beat of the bar here. If you do this all the time, the trick becomes obvious, so it's a good idea to try to get back to playing in time before you overdo it. Tip number eight, go crazy with the velocity. By this I mean go to the extremes, especially like with the previous tip, when you have lots of notes of the same value in a row. If you look at the velocity here, you can see it looks really disjointed. It sounds like this. This basically stems from jazz players accenting select notes. But to explain when and why to do that is maybe a bit too much for this video. So I'll just say the same as the first tips. Random sounds better than nothing. Tip number nine, how to fake split notes. This one's probably more of a hack than a tip, but split notes are a feature that V-Horns doesn't offer just yet. Split notes on saxophones are the kind of screaming sound you get. I, I don't really know how to explain it very well but hopefully a saxophonist can help me out in the comments. Anyway, so you can't do these on V-horns, but we can sort of fake short ones. They have to be short, otherwise it becomes obvious that it's fake. There's definitely one at the end here, and I don't remember if I used any others. This one's just an ornament, but it's similar programming-wise. Yeah, so it's just this one at the end, actually. So the trick is, you put one note, a tone below the note you want sounding, on really high velocity, and the note you want to sound, make sure that's on low velocity, and they also have to be linked as if it's legato. I should add that this only really works at high pitch, but that's okay because that's when you're more likely to hear split notes anyway. I don't think growling works so well the higher up in the register you get. So here's a few takes of how that sounds with and without that extra little note. Hopefully you can hear the difference with and without. Tip number 10, and the final tip, is another hack, and that's how to fake falls. This one is actually more just how to play them, or how to program them. It's, it's not really faked. Uh, this is one here, and it sounds like this. Do that again with the pitch bend in the right place at the beginning. So like most programming, the key information here is velocity and modulation. So you basically just play a fast scale down at the end. Any notes will do, but the more it sounds like random notes, the better. So don't just play a C major scale. I think it's important to start with close intervals, but once it's fading away, you can just drop off and play anything really. Here's how it sounds without the fall. And with again. I'll just solo saxes out here, and probably should have done this an hour ago, to be honest. Here's a few more versions with and without. And that's it. If you came here to watch the review or the demos or the tips, I hope there was something useful for you. I'm happy to answer anything at all in the comments. Um, this video took a good two days to make, so if you happen to be feeling generous and would like to support me, then you can always buy me a coffee, which I'll link in the description below. Other than that, I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
Um, please feel free to get in touch if you're from a sample library company and want me to do something similar for one of your instruments. Um, otherwise, next on my list is probably Infinite Brass, uh, which features actually here in this Incredibles clip alongside the amazing V-Horns brass section.